Lewis Hamilton is incredible in wet conditions. In fact, until last year's German Grand Prix, Hamilton was in beaten and rain affected races since 2014. That's five years of winning in wet conditions. And even in last year's crazy race at Hockenheim, where another rain master went on to win, he was leading until he ran wide into everyone's favorite place to crash that day. Granted, in recent years, he's mostly, probably always, been in the best car, but rain does level the playing field somewhat, reducing the advantages of a dominant car and shifting more responsibility onto the driver's skill. The stakes are higher in the wet, with every input from the driver needing absolute precision. A mistake in the dry might only cost you a few tenths of a second, but in the wet could send you into the barrier. It's in these incredibly difficult races where conditions are mixed up that can make the difference in a championship bid. If Hamilton gets it right, he's closer to another championship and further confirmation he's one of the greats. Or get it wrong and a potential championship win might slip by. So what is Hamilton doing differently inside the cockpit and what are his secrets to maintaining such pace in the wet? I'm Scott Mansell, pro driver and coach at Driver61, where we look at all things interesting in F1 and other motorsports. After watching hours of Hamilton's footage, there are three areas that stand out. His remarkable skill on the brakes, his precise feel and connection with the track surface, and his intelligent decisions with the racing line. First up, he is incredible on the brakes. This is something that we see in the style of Michael Schumacher too. In fact, both drivers' general style are very similar. It's simple to say, brake later and harder and you'll reduce lap time. It's much harder to do that in an F1 car and even more difficult in the wet where grip levels are dramatically reduced. I remember when I first drove an F1 car at the age of 17. In all honesty, I wasn't aware of how big a moment that was, but the thing that sticks in my mind about that day was how far I could push the car on the brakes. For the first laps, I was underestimating where to brake, but over the next laps, I pushed that braking point closer and closer to each corner, but the car kept slowing down. It almost seemed as if I was never going to be able to brake too late. Of course, that moment comes and I reach the limit with a little lockup, but it happened much, much later than I'd expected. The difficulty with braking in an F1 car is due to the massive downforce they create. For example, imagine you're on a circuit on a track day in a Mazda MX-5. As the car has no wings and no aerodynamic downforce, the grip you have at 120 miles an hour is the same that you have at 30. Therefore, when you brake at the end of a long straight, the pressure you put on the pedal can remain constant until you turn into the corner, as the grip is also consistent. The Mazda is what we call a mechanically gripped car. However, in an F1 car, the grip you have at 200 miles an hour is dramatically more than you have at 40. At 200 miles an hour, the air is moving over the car faster, and so the wings and floor are creating huge amounts of downforce, and in turn, pushing the tires into the track surface harder, meaning more grip. So think about what's happening when the driver brakes from 200 miles an hour to 40. The downforce and grip level is reducing within the braking zone. The driver needs to reduce the braking pressure as the car slows, which is a complex thing to do as the driver has multiple things changing throughout the braking zone. If the driver keeps the same braking pressure, the tyres would simply lock up once some of the downforce had dropped off. Hamilton is able to understand how the grip falls away better than most and follow this grip down with excellent precision. This means he can use more, almost all, of the tyre's potential grip when braking and so reduce his braking distance. Due to the changing conditions in the wet, maximising the braking zones is much more difficult than in the dry, not to mention balancing taking risks with gaining lap time. In these wet conditions, Hamilton is both quick and consistent, rarely making mistakes. Part of the reason Hamilton is so very good on the brakes is that he has an unbelievable feel for the grip of the circuit and in wet conditions. But what does it mean when a driver has good feel? Well, being fast is all about driving the car to its limit, using each of the tyres grip to its maximum at all times. When a driver has great feel, it becomes more apparent in challenging conditions, as the grip levels are changing lap by lap and even corner by corner, and the driver needs to adapt their driving appropriately. Imagine you're driving on the road and you need to make an emergency stop. You stamp on the brake pedal and you quickly slow down. It's likely that you'll hear and feel the car's ABS system working, it typically feels crunchy under the pedal. The ABS system is modulating the brake pressure for you, allowing the tyre to reach its peak grip and go a little beyond into under rotation before releasing the pressure slightly. 
This is a computerized way modern cars use all of the tires grip in a braking situation. And this is what Hamilton does so well, using almost all of the tires potential almost all of the time. What's important here is the ability to assess conditions and predict the amount of grip that's available. For this, Hamilton is referring to previous laps and combining that information with how the track is generally evolving. For example, imagine it's wet but the rain has stopped. The circuit is drying up and offering more grip each lap. With 20 high downforce F1 cars running on the track, sucking up the water and allowing the wind to take it away from the circuit, things change rather quickly. From personal experience, it's really incredible how quickly the circuit's grip can change, with lap times sometimes reducing by seconds each lap. So in this example, when approaching turn one on your next lap, you're going to be able to enter with more speed than the previous lap. But how much more? Well, it's always going to be an estimate, but you have the previous corners and the comparison to the previous lap to help your decision. Hamilton has the mental capacity to absorb all of this information process it and predict grip levels incredibly well, much like Jensen Button used to, another driver who was quick in the wet, especially when conditions were changing. However, having great feel is worthless if you're driving on the slippery parts of the track. In the wet, the normal racing line is almost always slippier than off it. This is because in dry conditions, drivers are more or less using the same parts of the track for braking, turning and exiting each corner. Little pieces of the tyres rubber get sheared off and stick to the track's surface. Over a race weekend, the circuit evolves as the layer of rubber gets thicker and thicker. Rubber on rubber is a very sticky combination and results in lap times dropping and tyre wear decreasing in the dry. I've often walked racetracks after the race weekends and your shoes literally stick to the racing line. However, in the rain, this smooth rubber surface is incredibly slippery and so drivers normally use the wet racing line. The wet racing line is basically doing everything you can to stay away from the rubber. This usually means not being on the most efficient line in terms of your arc through the corner, but it's worthwhile going the long way round as you'll have more grip. You'll see Hamilton, and to be fair, others, breaking in the middle of the circuit, then moving to the outside in the middle of the corner, before exiting away from the outside of the track. The point is to stay away from the slippery rubber, and even though you're certainly not on the most efficient racing line, and you're adding meters to your lap length, the extra grip more than makes up for it. Where Hamilton is different from others, except perhaps Verstappen, is that he squares or Vs the corner off more. Squaring a corner means driving straighter on the entry and the exit of a bend, but turning more in the middle. This means Hamilton can brake later and accelerate earlier, as the tyres grip isn't being used as much for turning, and so can be used more for slowing and accelerating the car. The downside to this line is a slower apex, but the overall line is faster for Hamilton. The car having less turning work to do on the exit has an additional benefit too. Imagine an invisible ribbon of rubber on the dry racing line. You've braked in the middle of the track, off the rubber, you've driven around the outside of it in the middle of the corner, but at some point on the exit, you're going to have to rejoin. The difference in grip level on and off the rubber is massive, and in a 1000 brake horsepower F1 car, the sudden reduction in grip can very easily spin the rear tyres, sending you to the scene of the accident. Taking a squarer racing line, doing more of the turning away from the rubber, means the car is sitting flatter with less steering when the driver hits the rubber and has the sudden loss of grip. This is not only faster for Hamilton, but it also protects him from making a mistake as the car is easier to control. It's possible to see this risk mitigation everywhere in Hamilton's driving style, racecraft and general racing attitude, where he balances absolute speed with being fast over a race. It's this balance of risk and reward, both in wet and dry conditions, combined with the almighty Mercedes that makes him seemingly unstoppable. As a driver, Hamilton is well-rounded and much more technical and deep thinking than I think a lot of people give him credit for. And it's these qualities that have led to him more often than not beating his teammates and winning all those world championships. If you enjoyed this, check out our short playlist where I examine other F1 driving styles such as Alonso's weird steering technique in his Renault days or this other video I think you'll love. Don't forget to subscribe to Driver61 which helps us sweet talk sponsors and in turn create better content for you. Thanks and I'll see you next time.